You know that feeling you get when you wake up in the morning and you're bursting with energy? I don't know what that feels like because I'm not a morning person. And I know many of you don't know that either because many of you asked for a video on how to get up early without feeling tired or how to fall asleep quickly. That's all there is to it. Let us hear from Andrew Huberman, a tenured professor in the Department of Neurobiology at Stanford University School of Medicine. He provides a wealth of useful information on how to overcome all of your sleep issues. If you turn on the lights before waking up, just around 45 minutes to an hour before waking up, even if your eyelids are closed, provided you're not under the, the covers, after doing that for a few days, that increases your total sleep time and shifts forward the time at which you feel sleepy. It makes you want to go to bed earlier each night. Now, in a kind of uh, diabolical way, they did this with teenagers who are notorious for wanting to wake up late and stay up late. And what they found was bright light flashes, just turning on the lights in their environment, overhead lights, because they're trying to activate the system. And that's why they're using overhead lights. Even through the eyelids, before these kids woke up, then made those kids naturally want to go to bed earlier and they ended up sleeping longer. So that's something you could try. You could put your lights on a timer to go on um, early in the day before you wake up. You could open your blinds so that sunlight is coming through. Now again, if you, you know, curl up under the covers, then it's not going to reach uh, these neurons. But it's remarkable the light can actually penetrate the eyelids, activate these neurons, and go to the central clock. You have the capacity for what are called phase advances and phase delays. And I don't want to complicate this too much. So the simplest way to think about phase advances and phase delays is that if you see light late in the day, and in particular in the middle of the night, your brain and body will think that that's morning light, even though it's not sunlight because you have this heightened sensitivity. And it will phase delay, it will delay your clock. It will essentially make you want to get up later and go to sleep later. So if you get light exposure too late in the evening or in the middle of the night, it's going to make it hard to want to wake up the next morning early and to go to bed early. The opposite is also true. If you wake up early, say, you know, 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. and get light exposure, or even earlier, 4 a.m. and get light exposure, it will phase advance your clock, okay? It's going to make your clock think it's earlier and you'll want to wake up earlier. So the simple way to think about this is if you're having trouble waking up early and feeling alert early in the day, you're going to want to try and get bright light exposure even before waking up because it will advance your clock. It will send, it's sort of like turning the clock forward. Whereas if you are having trouble waking up early, you definitely don't want to get too much light exposure or any light exposure to your eyes late in the evening and in the middle of the night because it's just gonna delay your clock more and more. So rather than get into the specifics of everybody's situation, because there are many of you out there with different situations and lifestyle requirements, etc., the way to think about this is that you have these internal mechanisms of adenosine and circadian clocks, and they're always operating. And what you're trying to do is provide them anchors. You're trying to provide them consistent, powerful anchors so that your cortisol, your melatonin, and then everything that's, that cascades down from that, like your metabolism and your ability to learn and your sense of alertness, your dopamine, your serotonin, all that stuff is timed regularly. One of the reasons why there's so much uh, you know, challenge out there with focus and anxiety and depression. There are a lot of reasons for that. But one of the reasons is that people's internal mechanisms aren't anchored to anything regular. Now, this doesn't require being neurotically attached to getting up at a very specific time, going outside, viewing the sunlight at the same time every day. These systems, again, will average. But if you can provide them consistent light anchors early in the day and in the evening and avoiding light at night, you will be amazed at the tremendous number of positive effects that can come from that at the level of metabolic factors, hormones, and just general feelings of well-being. In fact, most of us are familiar with what it is to not sleep well and all the terrible effects that has. Maybe one night you're fine, two nights even. For the new par parents out there, I, I sympathize with you. But most people are not familiar with what it is to sleep really, really well on a consistent basis. And when you start doing that by controlling your sleep environment, right? Get the proper sleep surface, get the proper pillow, get the temperature in the room right, get your light exposure right, 
Start timing your exercise at normal periods or times throughout the, the day and week. It's amazing how many other biological systems just naturally fall in line. And this is why whenever people ask me, what should I take? Which is one of the most common questions I get. What supplement should I take? What drugs should I be taking? What things should I be taking? The first question I always ask them is, how's your sleep? And 90% of the time they tell me they either have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep or they don't feel rested throughout the day. A brief note about naps. Naps provided that they're less than one ultradian cycle, right? They're 20 minutes or 30 minutes or even an hour can be very beneficial for a lot of people. You don't have to take them, but many people naturally feel a dip in energy and focus late in the afternoon. In fact, if we were going to look at wakefulness, what we would find is that you get that morning light exposure, hopefully your cortisol goes up, people will start feeling awake. And then around two or three or four in the afternoon, there's a spike in, in everything from alertness to ability to learn some metabolic factors drop, and then it just naturally comes back up and then it tapers off as the night goes on. So for some of you, naps are great. I love taking naps. Some people, they wake up from naps feeling really groggy. That's probably because they're not sleeping as well as they should at night or as long as they should at night. And so they're dropping into REM sleep or deeper forms of sleep in the daytime. And then they wake up and they feel kind of disoriented. Other people feel great after a nap. So that's another case where just like with caffeine, you sort of have to evaluate for yourself. So naps are going to be good for some people, not for others. I have a colleague, a very accomplished neuroscientist who likes to take naps just after lunch. I personally like to take a nap around 3 or 4 p.m. But there's a practice that I've adopted in the last five years that I've found to be immensely beneficial that is sort of like napping, but isn't napping. It's a thing that they call yoga nidra. Yoga nidra actually means yoga sleep. And it's a sort of meditation that you listen to. There are a number of scripts. I've talked about this on podcasts before, but I'm going to post a link to the two that I like most that allows you to consciously bring your entire body and mind into a state of deep relaxation. And sometimes you fall asleep and sometimes you don't. This is done for 10 to 30 or even 60 minutes at a time. The other thing that works really well is meditation. So I'm talking about naps, but I'm also talking about yoga nidra, which is sort of a form of meditation and then more standard forms of meditation. All three of those do something powerful, which is that they bring our mind into a state of less so-called sympathetic nervous system activation, which is what governs your alertness. And instead it activates cells and circuits in your body that promote the parasympathetic nervous system or the calming system. A lot of people are not good at falling asleep because they're not good at calming down. So some people have no trouble falling asleep, but many people have a hard time falling asleep or at least every once in a while experience challenges falling asleep. I don't have problems falling asleep most nights, but I've noticed that if I'm working very hard or if the world is particularly stressful, my mind gets into a bit of a kind of OCD loop where I tend to ruminate on things and I'm not even thinking about anything in particular. It's just challenging for me to disengage and fall asleep. Meditation and yoga nidra scripts have been immensely helpful for me in terms of accelerating the transition to sleep. So they involve taking a few minutes, 10 to 30 minutes or so, just like you would for a nap, and just listening to a script almost passively. And it has you do some particular patterns of breathing and some other um, kind of body scan like things that can really help people learn to relax, not just in that moment, but get better at relaxing and turning off thinking in order to fall asleep when they want to do that at night.